to buy every brand of AA battery from my wife's favorite stores to see which brand gives the most juice per dollar. What is that place? And to figure out what makes some batteries better than others, we'll cut them all in half and learn the juicy science behind how disposable batteries work. Because with two kids, we go through a lot of batteries. But with all the options in both name brands and store brands, Excuse me, do you guys sell batteries here? Uh, which batteries last the longest and which ones provide the most current per average cost of the battery? To find out, we'll test eight brand name and eight off-brand batteries until we reveal the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and which batteries make it to the championship. But first, let's get into the science and discover exactly what's inside and underneath all these brand labels. A battery is basically a bucket of electrons that flows from one side to the other to make a circuit work. They use two layers of reacting materials which convert chemical energy into electrical energy by releasing electrons. The two main types of disposable batteries are alkaline-based or lithium ion. During the experiment, we'll see which one costs less per amp. We'll test each battery with this fancy battery analyzer. It'll drain each battery at a constant 500 milliamps per hour and tell us exactly how much current the battery used until it's totally drained. For reference, a toy like this uses about 0.1 milliamps every time it makes that sound. Even the worst batteries have about 1,000 milliamps of juice, which means it can play this sound about 10,000 times before it dies in the back of your car while you're on a road trip. In round one, we have the most expensive Energizer versus the most expensive Duracell. Now, it's important to mention that the majority of disposable batteries are alkaline. An alkaline battery has an inner core of zinc-based metal mixture that kind of looks like toothpaste. When I cut all the alkaline batteries open, they looked about the same, except for the one from the dollar store, which had about half as much zinc and a random plastic ring on the inside. But more on that later. The outer core is typically a dry, clay-like material called manganese dioxide. These layers are physically separated by a film which is soaked in an an alkaline solution, which is a mixture of distilled water to supply the extra compounds needed for the reaction. The only way for the cores to react is when the circuit is complete and one side of the bucket is connected to the other. When this happens, the manganese dioxide pulls the electrons from the zinc anode and the two cores react until they're all used up in the electrochemical reaction. The Duracell used this fancy resealable packaging, which made me think it would perform better. Whereas the most expensive energizer was the only one that was a lithium ion battery, which means that it uses a different electrochemical reaction to create the electron flow. Instead of cores, it uses a rolled up layered sheet with a lithium metal cathode on one side, a separator in the middle, and a graphite based anode on the other side. And if this explosion says anything about its performance, then it's gonna do pretty well. Hmm. And even though it was more expensive, the Energizer Ultimate ultimately gets a W in the first round based on cost per amp. So we did the same thing with the Energizer Max and Duracell Copper Tops, and even though it was close, this time the Duracell won based on slightly better performance. When I went to the local grocery store, I initially picked up the eight pack of batteries, but then realized that the 40 pack was only a few dollars more expensive. 40 batteries for $12? Hmm. How are you doing? Do you know if those batteries are any good? Uh, are batteries? Yeah. I've had them last longer than the Duracell. They last longer than the Duracell. That's crazy. Well, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> oh, I still have to pay. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, I got so excited about what I thought were cheap batteries that I almost forgot to pay. So for the experiment, I'll normalize the battery prices by using the average price per battery between available stores if you buy the eight pack. The eight packs were the most commonly available and had the most consistent pricing between the same brands at different stores. And as it turns out, the nice worker lady at the grocery store may have been onto something because the Wegmans off-brand battery performed just as well as some of the brand names and was significantly less expensive. By the way, Target and Amazon performed exactly the same, within 10 milliamps in every test that we did. But the Amazon was less expensive than Target. In general, don't buy batteries from the dollar store. Turns out that the plastic ring on the inside didn't give it any advantage. 
But if you do, buy the Panasonic brand because it performs significantly better. And even though things at the dollar store actually cost $1.25, probably because of inflation, they still were only 63 cents per battery and significantly less cost than the brand names. On the other hand, CVS and Rite Aid batteries were more expensive than the brand names and also performed slightly worse, which leaves our final group of the Sweet 16, the less expensive brand names, including two versions of Rayovac, EverReady Gold, and Fuji. Despite their average to low cost, these all performed reasonably well, but Rayovac High Energy was the clear winner based on its low cost and surprisingly high amount of available current. If you zoom back out to the bracket, Rayovac High Energy beats Energizer Ultimate Lithium Ion and Wegmans beats Panasonic to make it to the championship round. Because the results between Wegmans and Rayovac High Energy were so close, for the championship round, we'll put four of each battery into these two floodlights. Whichever brand keeps the light on the longest will be crowned the champion. While that's running, here's the breakdown of the batteries that we tested. The average price per amp was 60 cents, so any battery beneath that mark is a decent deal. And surprisingly, when considering cost per amp, the average store brand battery actually did better than the average name brand battery. After three days, the Wegmans batteries finally gave up, making the clear winner, Rayovac High Energy. Which battery should you actually buy? Well, it depends. If you want it to last twice as long as any other alkaline battery, go with the Energizer Ultimate Lithium Ion. If you want the least cost per amp, go with the Rayovac High Energy. By the way, Rayovac brand was actually purchased by Energizer in 2019. So in buying Rayovac, you're actually buying an Energizer product. For the diehard Duracell fans, go with the regular copper tops instead of the Optimums. The results show that the extra money you're paying for the Optimums seems to be a marketing trick and you're actually just paying for fancy packaging. With all these leftover batteries, at least I know I'll be a prepared dad the next time my son needs new batteries for his toy. Grab some batteries, unscrew it. Triple A. Triple A.